Hello lovely book dragons and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be doing the mid-year book forget tag. I don't remember who the original creator is of this video, but if I find it, I will leave it linked down below for you guys to check out. But this is one of the most popular videos to do around this time of year. And I love check-in videos. I love list videos, check-in videos, all that jazz. So this video is right up my alley. And we're going to be talking about the best, the worst, the most disappointing books we've read so far this year. And we're going to be looking forward to goals. The very first thing I would like to say is that I started my year with my reading goal being at one book. I didn't want to stress out. I wanted 2020 to be the year where I just read whatever the heck I want. And that means reading huge ass fantasy series that will take forever to read. And so I set my goal at one book. I had decided this back in December and then, well, I broke my leg and then COVID happened. So basically I had a lot of time on my hands a lot of reading time on my hands and I'm not complaining but I'm saying that I realized that I was going to be reading a lot a lot a lot and I decided okay one one book is just ridiculous so I decided you know what I'm gonna do my usual and my usual for every year is 50 books so I set my goal to 50 books and I realized I was gonna surpass that really early on in the year and so then I decided that I was going to accomplish something this year that I've been wanting to do forever. I've had this soft goal in mind for years, and that is to read 100 books in 2020. I thought, let's start the decade off well, and to like balance out the fact that 2020 has been a shit year. And yeah, I'm glad to say that I have read 61 books so far this year. 61, I'm really happy, I'm right on track, like I'm ahead of schedule to read 100 books. And that makes me so happy and I hope that I can reach my goal this year. So let's start the tag. The very first question is the best book you have read so far this year. And me being me, I could not just pick one book. No, that's not how we roll. I had decided, I've decided to pick three books. The first book I want to talk about is The Blade Itself by Joe Abercrombie. This book is a grimdark fantasy that I had heard amazing things about. And I have discovered that I love grimdark. And so I needed to read this. I needed to pick this up. I got an amazing edition and I read it and I loved it. I loved it so much. I mean, I am a character-driven reader and this book is made for people like me. If you need a big complex plot to read a book, don't read this. I cannot tell you what the plot of this book is because I don't really think there is one. I mean, there's like little plots for each character, but the characters are the driving force of this book. And so is Abercrombie's writing and the humor in this. I absolutely fell in love with this book. It is so, so great. Again, if you don't like Grimdark, if you need a plot to keep you reading, this book is not for you. If you love amazing characters, please give this book a try. It is just so good. The second book I want to talk about is, of course, The Rage of Dragons by Evan Winter. This book blew my socks off. I read this 500 page book in two days. I couldn't put it down. This book, on the flip side to The Blade itself, is mainly plot driven. We follow Tao as he is a young guy and in his world the factions have always been at war. This is like a war driven continent. There's always been war, there will always be war. One in every thousand women I think it is can call down dragons and one in every hundred men, I think it that's the numbers can become a killing machine, like transform himself into a huge fighter killing machine. And Tao was like, you know what? I, I, I don't want war. I don't want any of this. All I want is to marry the girl of my dreams, live in a small cottage, have kids and leave me alone. Things happen in Tao's life that just kind of throw a wrench in his plans and he needs to become a fighter. And this is one of the best revenge stories I have read. To this day, it is one of the best military fantasy novels I have read. It is one of the best heavy combat driven fantasies I have read. It is one of the best fantasy novels I have read, period. I love this book. I loved it with all my heart. It is amazing and you definitely, definitely need to read it. It is just so phenomenal. And finally, a book that I also really, really enjoyed. I wouldn't put it as high as the ones I've just talked about, but I didn't want to not mention it in this video. That is House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J Maas. Listen, I am a Sarah J Maas fan. She is the woman that got me into fantasy. I owe her. 
I owe this woman a lot. And when House of Earth and Blood came out, I was a little bit nervous because I thought, listen, her adult novels are going to be like all trashy, but no, this book was so good. This book, I think, is 800 pages. Yeah, I think it's 800 pages. I read it in three days. Three days, guys. It is so good. I mean, it is an adult fantasy novel, but of course, it still has the Sarah J. Mass flair. If you don't like Sarah J. Mass, don't pick it up. If you don't like Sarah J. Mass, don't read it. If you don't like Sarah J. Mass, don't trash people who like Sarah J. Mass, okay? Because nobody is coming to to trash who you like. And that's fine. We all have different tastes. We all love different things. And let, let, let's move on. The second question in this tag is the best sequel that I have read so far this year. And again, I picked three because... <laughs> You know. Number one is The Well of Ascension by Brendan Sanderson, and this is the sequel to The Final Empire. Funny story, I read The Final Empire three times before picking up the sequel, because The Final Empire is more of a contained story, it is like a high story, but The Well of Ascension really blows everything out of, out of the water, it like blows the world wide open, and it was phenomenal, oh my god, I... The Well of Ascension was just so good. Like, so many twists and turns, and our characters become so great, and oh, I just... Man, I love that book. The second favorite sequel that I have is Royal Assassin by Robin Hobb. I read Assassin's Apprentice, and I, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a good classic fantasy story, but I didn't see the huge appeal, like why everyone loves Robin Hobb. I mean, everyone says that Assassin's Apprentice is bad, or like not so good. I still thought it was really good and I was like, hey, what are y'all on about? She is like, this book was really good. But I could see that it's not like phenomenal. Royal Assassin? Yeah, I love that book. I gave it five stars. I was so attached, once again, to this character, to, to everything that was happening in this novel. And people tell me, ha, huh, listen, you think Royal Assassin is great? This first trilogy is her weakest. Like, you are in for a treat. And I'm like, how can this be her weakest? I loved this trilogy. I loved it. I Royal Assassin just... I, I also finished Assassin's Quest in the meantime, and I really, really enjoyed that one. Also gave it five stars. But I, I love Royal Assassin just more because it's what made me fall in love with the Realm of the Elderlings, with Robin Hobb, and I will always owe it for that. And the third sequel I want to talk about is The Dragon Republic by R.F. Kuang. I absolutely love this. I listened to the audiobook because the audiobook is just so good, so engaging, and... Like this also, like the first book blew me away. The first book is one of the best fantasy, again, grim, dark fantasy stories I have read. I love that book. It, huge, huge, huge amounts of trigger warnings for that novel. I mean, there's everything in there. So proceed with caution. But the second book is so good. It's about betrayal. It's about friendship. It's about everything. And I, I loved it. I loved this book so much. Question number three, a new release that you want to read but haven't yet. And there's quite a few of those, but I'm going to be talking about two main ones. The very first one being Aurora Burning by J. Christoph and Amy Kaufman. I read Aurora Rising last year and I thought it was a very, very fun and engaging science fiction book. It's not the best sci-fi. Of course, it's YA sci-fi. It's nothing like, I mean, there's Dune in the world, there's Hyperion, it's all those things. But I just love the these novels because it's like a a band of misfits in space battling aliens and stuff like what's not to like it's just a great time it's super fun and i only read illuminate by j christoph and amy kaufman and people always say well it's basically the same story but in novel form so i wouldn't know but i really liked aurora burning i mean aurora rising and i'm really looking forward to reading aurora burning i own it i just need to read it and the second new release that i absolutely want to read is shorefall by robert jackson bennett i read foundry site in april i think and i absolutely loved it. I was taken by surprise. This is a fantasy novel in which you can scribe on things. So like, for example, if you have, oh, I'm really bad at this. If you have a a table, for example, and you scribe that it's super heavy, then the table will be super heavy. It's like a little complicated, but it's super fun. And there's so much humor in it. And the characters are amazing. And I really liked it. I bought the second book. I haven't read it yet, but I definitely need to do that. Question number four, most anticipated book for the second half of the year. And again, I have three because that's who I am. I know I'm not putting um, the next Abercrombie book on the list because I, I still only have read The Blade itself. I need to continue on with The First Law World, but I have three books to talk about. The very first book, I mean, if you know me, you, you, you could pr predict this. The very first one is Rhythm of War by Brandon Sanderson. The fourth book in the Stormlight Archive series. I, 
listen, I need I need Kaladin back in my life. I love that man. I need Kaladin. I need Syl. I need Dalinar. I need all of them right back in my life. I'm so excited for this book. Oh my goodness. Like, oh, November. I think I'm going to take a few days off and just binge read it. I'm so excited. Huh. Funnily enough, I'm looking at my list and all of these three books are huge fantasy series and they all come out in November. Fuck me. The second book that I'm super excited for, I mean, it just like makes sense. It is Fires of Vengeance by Evan Winter. It is the sequel to The Rage of Dragons. Listen, I mean, you saw how much I love The Rage of Dragons. I'm even probably going to reread it before the second book because it was that good to read it twice in the same year. And I'm so, so pumped for this book. And I just hope that he won't take two years between books because if Brandon Sanderson takes two years between Stormlight books, which makes sense. I mean, those books are like 1500 pages or so. But please, Evan Winter, keep writing because I need, I need your story, okay? Thanks. And the final book is The Conclusion to the Poppy War, The Burning God, also coming out in November. Super, super excited. The cover is fantastic. I'm like, November is gonna be my month. It's gonna be my reading month, but some of them come out late November, so it's gonna be in December. Mm, best preparation for Christmas ever. So excited. Question number five is a little bit more negative. It's your biggest disappointment, and I have two. The first one is Wolf by Wolf by Ryan Groudon. This is a alternate historical fiction novel where Hitler and the Nazis won, and yeah, people, the resistance, are trying to bring him down, as you would, you know. And we follow our main character who can skin shift. She's a shapeshifter. Like, she's not a shapeshifter, but she can change her face to look like different humans. And this is because she was injected with a bunch of products in internment camps and this was the result from that and so she decides to enter a motorcycle race because the victor of that motorcycle race can meet hitler at the end at the victor's ball and she wants to assassinate him this book like the premise sounds amazing i love historical fiction i love books set in world war ii i love the fantasy twist to it or the sci-fi twist whatever fantasy sci-fi i loved it I loved the premise and then the book was just so lackluster. Like the execution was poor. It was all focused on the romance. The decisions of the characters make no sense. Like that girl went into this plan of bringing down Hitler, okay? She goes in less prepared than I go in to a meeting at work. Like that cannot be. And the second biggest disappointment of the year is Red Sister by Mark Lawrence. I was so looking forward to this. Grimdark fantasy, assassin nuns, I mean, sign me up, right? Wrong. The execution of this was so poor, I there, there was not much I liked. I, I was trying to be positive at the beginning, and then I just kept on seeing what was wrong with it. The characters were sometimes out of character, the, all the side characters were bland, I couldn't distinguish any of them. The world building didn't exist, I, yeah, it was just, the ending was good, like, kind of, but also super convenient I, I i'm not sure how i felt about like this book is so conflicting because i had such high hopes about it and so many people love it so many people whose opinions i trust love it and i just did it let's go a little bit happier for question six and talk about our biggest surprise and i have to talk about one of us is lying by karen m mcmanus because this book this book is the kind of book that so basically the story is five kids going to detention four come out alive one died and who done it basically and I went into the bookstore one day to buy something else. I saw this book. The, the bookstore owner and I are pretty good friends now. And so she was like, hey, you need to read this. It was really good. And I was like, oh, okay, yeah, sure. And I got it. And uh, I paid a big price for a paperback. It was 12 euros. I mean, that was a lot for a paperback. And I bought it. And it sat on my shelves unread for forever, for years. I had it in my hands so many times to unhaul. Because I thought, you know what? I've owned this book for forever now. I'm not going to read it. I, I don't even like mystery thrillers anymore. They're all predictable. I don't like them. I, I'm a character-based reader, as I told you, and I never attached to characters in those novels. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to unhaul it. But something, a little something in me always said, keep it. So I did. And one day in April, I was sitting right in this chair. I had finished a book that I was reading. I think it was Lady Midnight. And I was like, I need something different. I need something a little more, I don't know, different. And I turned around, I looked at my shelf, and the spine of one of us is lying was popping. And I was like, okay, fine, I'll start you. This is my, like, try a chapter. If you suck, I'm gonna unhaul you. 
I picked it up and I read it in one day. This book took me completely by surprise. I wasn't expecting to like it. I, I even almost regretted buying it and now I'm so happy I read it. I was so attached to the characters because you follow the four surviving characters each in their POV and I didn't want any of them to have done it or I also didn't want them all to have done it together. But yeah, you know, like you're like, okay, that is even better because then it's not one of the people that you like that has done it. But all four of them that makes oh oh it was like i couldn't put it down i couldn't stop reading i couldn't stop reading and i would even say i would even add to this question the biggest surprise also a good girl's guide to murder because these two books really reconciled me with the mystery thriller genre and i know they're ya and so i'm excited to read some adult versions of mystery thrillers again but these two books really reconciled me with the genres and i love both of them i gave both of them four stars amazing. Question number seven, a new favorite author. So it can be new to me that I hadn't read before this year or a debut author. And I'm going to pick new to me author in the sense that I hadn't read them before. And I have two authors and I mean, it's probably predictable. Actually three, three. Hey, hey, Joanna, you almost forgot one. Evan Winter, Joe Abercrombie and Robin Hobb. Fantastic, phenomenal. We'll read everything these guys put out. I don't know if Robin Hobb well, she's a woman, so what the woman puts out. I don't know what Robin Hobb, if she's going to continue writing because she didn't finish uh, the, Real the Realm of the Elderlings that long ago, so maybe she's still going to write. I will, regardless, read everything the woman has written and everything the woman writes. I will read everything Joe Abercrombie has written and writes. And same for Evan Winter. I love these three autobi authors, and they are on my favorite shelves with uh, George R. R. Martin, with J.R.R. Tolkien, and with Brandon Sanderson. Yes. Phenomenal. Question number eight, your newest fictional crush. And listen, guys, that spot will never, never be filled again. It is there. I have one fictional crush and there will be no one who takes this spot from Kaladin Stormblast. Like no one. OK, like I will always answer this question the same way for the next hundred years if Scythe becomes reality and I won't die, that is, I will still live 100 years, I will always answer this question with Kaladin Stormblast. Kaladin Stormblast, he's the man, okay? Like on my Twitter handle, on my Instagram, I am called Joanna Stormblast. Does that not tell you enough? There is no other man like Kaladin, except for my actual in-life husband. I wonder if Melvin had a spren, what it would be. He should take the Knight's Radiant test. I wanna know, would he be a Windrunner? Oh my God, imagine if my husband is a Windrunner. Okay. Question number nine, your newest favorite character. And this had to go to Sandan Glopta. I mean, I read The Blade itself, right? The prologue is in Logan Ninefinger's perspective. And then the first chapter is Sandan Glopta. I read the first couple of pages and I already felt so much for him. I, he's not a good guy, okay? He is a ex-soldier who was captured, tortured, and because of everything that was done to him, like he has to use a cane to walk, he, they, everything is broken about him. And he is now a torturer. So he's like the tortured become torturer, you know, and he is like, he's a dark character, but I love him so much. Yeah, I, I love Sandman Glockta. I love him so much. I feel so much for him. I cannot wait to continue reading the first Law Universe and I hope to see him in many more books, at least for the next two i hope he doesn't die in before they're hanged but i am so much looking forward to continue reading from him i love him my second favorite character of the year i could not not talk about him it's night eyes from the realm of the elderlings he's fitz's wolf and i love him okay i love him question number 10 a book that made me cry now i'm not very much of a book crier but as you already saw a little bit earlier i got really emotional about the well of ascension so imagine how i felt about the hero of ages I, I, if you've read the book, you know, if you haven't read, go read it. It's amazing, phenomenal, fantastic. Brandon Sanderson, mwah, chef's kiss. But at the end, I, 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 I shed, I shed tears. Okay. I shed tears. I shed tears for, for all of them. I shed tears for Ten Soon. I, Ten Soon, like the, mm. Another book that made me like tear up and cry a little bit was The Binding by Bridget Collins. I like that book is so, so, oh, like that, that's the only way to describe that book. It, like takes a knife and right there in the fields. And so mm, it's not a book for everyone. Um, it's a book where you follow, I don't want to say a lot because the synopsis, I feel like says too much already. If you read the back of the book, you basically follow a main our main character who 
lives in a world where books are forbidden. And there's a reason why they're forbidden, and I don't want to tell you about that. And one day he he gets an apprenticeship with a book binder, and he's like, what? And everyone's like, ugh. And, but like, I cannot tell you anything about this book, but it's just so emotional. It's quite dark, but it's, it's yeah. It really hit me right here, and I loved it. Question number 11 is a book that made you happy, and of course, that was Kings of the Wild by Nicholas Ames. I took forever to read that book, and I don't know why, but I still really, really, really enjoyed it, and that was such a fun book. Like, it has so much humor in it. I laughed out loud so many times, and it's just such a refresher in a fantasy novel to have that much humor for it not to be, even though the stakes are really high, it didn't feel like it at all because kind of you if you know the name of the second book you know how the first book ends so it's really you're just there to be on an adventure with some old men who used to be amazing war heroes back in their youth but now they're old and they need to go one last time on a mission and it's so fun it's so funny and it's a great time Question number 12, the most beautiful book you've bought this year, and that's The Binding by Bridget Collins. It's amazing. It is so beautiful, so stunning, and I, I think it's one of the most beautiful books I own. And finally, the last question, question number 13, what books do you still need to read before the end of the year? And that's like, of course, a load of question. Everything on my shelves, everything in the world, but I picked two books that I haven't talked about with new releases or anything. Um, two books that are on my general TBR that I really want to read before the end of the year. First one is Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Rizafon. I've had this on my shelves forever to read. It's in my top 10 books to read this year. I need to read this. And the second one is Malice by John Wynn. I'm really in the mood to try this Faithful and the Fallen series. Everyone says it's like amazing, just like Joe Abercrombie. I get that comparison a lot. And mm, if it's as good as Joe Abercrombie, Damn. Oh, I'm excited. So I want to read those two books before the end of the year. So there you go, guys. That is my mid-year book freakout tag. Let me know down below your favorite book of the year so far, your least favorite book of the year so far, what book that has come out and you haven't yet read but want to, and your most anticipated book for the second half of the year. Let me know those things down below in the comments. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will see you soon with another one. In the meantime, stay safe, stay happy, and read some books. Bye, guys.